Come travel back to 2007 in the Cat Tub Time Machine for a look at Warhammer 40k Apocalypse. Spiky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. I'm Rob Bear, and today we're going to travel back in time, of course, to 2007, the summer of 2007 to be precise. Chicago, Illinois. Chicago Games Day, which they don't do anymore. 2007, Apocalypse was previewed by Games Workshop. And man, what a magical time. We were all sitting there and we're just kind of like, you know, G-Dub gets, gets up on the stage and it's like, hey, we're gonna talk to you about an expansion today. You know, remember it was still fourth edition. Like, we had heard something big was coming. You know, I wanted to check it out. So I go to a little seminar thing and they get up on stage and the very, the very first guy comes out with this template, right? And people are like, what's this template? What's this template all about? How does this relate? I mean, obviously it looks like a large blast, but then when he shows it, there's like literally the room gets silent, like silent, like you could hear a pin drop and people are like, yo, WTF is that, <laughs> right? And then he starts talking about how they're gonna upscale the game. And you're gonna need this right here, basically. And he starts explaining about the rings. You know, this is the the massive blast, and this the normal blast here, and this is the apocalypse mega blast. And then they come out and they grab the uh, they grab the next template, the hellstorm template, and they're just like, and you know, showcasing it. And there's just like the room gets silent again, you know. And then there's the little uh, flamer template right there, and it's got the the big five inch template right there and people are still like losing their shit they're just like what is going on because they didn't say anything about immediately about all super heavies and stuff that were going to come out right i mean we knew there's super heavies from forge world but we didn't know anything about the supplement nothing they're just like yo check this out right and then they start talking a little bit more about you know wouldn't it be cool to upscale games of 40k and we're all thinking like our little tanks our little vindicator tanks our little you know um land raiders and shit and we're just like yo how do you even like scale up i mean you got templates and that's cool but you know we don't even know where you're going and then they grab you know the apocalypse uh barrage template and they start talking about how it's all randomized and you can get multiple shots in here and all this stuff and we just like literally everybody's jaw is on the floor at the seminar at games day chicago 2007 and it's just like we don't even know what's going on and they start showing pictures off of some of the new kits that are coming out like that the plastic bane blade and people are like oh my god plastic bane blade everybody's losing their shit remember the middle of the 2000s everything was still new 2007 like for instance bowls started in 2006 right bell lost souls okay so like the internet scene was just really starting to come on point i didn't start blogging until uh, 2009 you know i've been doing that for what eight eight years now seven seven years depending on how you count a year but you know now it's you know it's a full-on like website media production all that stuff but like this was big like this news travel fast it was in, it was insane so then later in the fall we got all the apocalypse bundles you know all the the rule book here and this is what we're going to take a look at today but remember if you just go for you know 20 years of just playing with your little models and your your little your little mans and your little tanks and all of a sudden somebody shows you this book shows you those templates like it literally changes your game now now these days of course apocalypse there's a new edition of it it came out what two summers ago i guess basically but to be honest 40k is basically 40k unbound is basically apocalypse at this point so there's nothing quite new there and it, you know the the, the kind of whimsical magic of it has kind of wore off because we just don't you if you want to play a big game you can play a big game you know it's all good there's there's no big deal so this supplement came out and i think at the time it was like 50 bucks but i think the new one today is uh, i want to say 75 dollars right but for the for its time like all the graphics and you know all the fold out posters and everything and you know who knew freaking 10 10 almost 10 years later this book is literally nine years old 10 years later almost we actually have a warlord titan to play with you know you see all this stuff in here and and eventually it has mostly all become a reality i guess except for mm, 
pretty much everything in this picture is uh, has a kit for it, so that's kind of cool to see. So all sorts of stuff in here. They didn't do a campaign. Um, they kind of did. It just kind of came out, and they're just like, yo, play, right? But it came out with all of these, like, huge box sets, bundle deals, you know, the, the chapter box here that went for, like, 500 bucks, but you got $900 worth of Space Marines out of it. So it was just... It was an amazing time, huge time for the hobby. Everybody was buying these bundle deals. There was such a, a huge savings. They were coming out with data sheets. You know, they could put these things out in White Dwarf. They could put these things on Games Workshop site. And Games Workshop site used to actually have a lot more functionality. There was all there, you know, there's forums and things on it. There was all these content and stuff you could download, and they would put stuff out pretty regularly where you could, you know, somebody would come up with a new conversion and they would basically, you know, uh, highlight it. Now they can't do that these days because of the whole like. IP, do I own it? Do I not own it? You know, the chapter house thing. But back in those days, it was, you know, they could slap some official stuff on it and be, be like, it's kind of ours. But, you know, whatever, times change. We don't know exactly what's going on behind the scenes there. But it was a magical time. It got a lot of people inspired in the hobby, and that's really what, what matters, right? So contents of the book, it was a 200 page book. You can tell it's like the bigger size here, right? Cause this is a, you know, this is a standard sheet of paper. So it was basically like the, um, uh, what is it? The European A1 size, I think it's called. R you know, running it down, it was basically like, here's how you play. Here's a huge ass battle report to get your huge ass battle picture scene, you know, McCrag and everything. Basically how it's popping off. Cause remember the battle for McCrag was the starter at the time. So they kind of went with that theme. This was the cover of the battle for McCrag, right? So then you got into armies and battlefields, basically just kind of all sorts of different things and train pieces basically to get you going. And then it gets into the actual forces, the rules. Now remember there's no, the flyers were completely different. They would make bombing runs and strafing runs. They would come in from off the board. They were not the flyers we knew today. Data sheets that actually gets into the specific rules for a lot of the stuff. Now they crossed over a lot of forge roll kits in here with like Titans and things, which was cool to see, right? And then it got into, um, I don't think they had any formations in here, but they, they went through a specific battle, the battle for the can factory, which was Eldar versus Orc. So they tried to put in as much content into here as they could. And then you got strategic assets, which they didn't have the cards at the time like they do now. Like if you want to play Apocalypse, current Apocalypse, you can get the strategic asset cards. And then the appendices into all sorts of different stuff. And something we actually missed, a lot of people missed in here, was an Allies Matrix, which was pretty much the precursor to what they snuck in the 6th edition of 40k. Now granted, this was 2007, 6th edition came out, I want to say 2012. We'll go with that. So about five years prior, now it's not exact, they, they tweaked it a little bit, and of course they tweaked it from six to seven. But it's always interesting to see, going back, looking at some of these books, the precursor rules, you know, that really made their way through several different editions across several different brand, brands and such like that. So it's always cool to kind of be like, oh, that's where they got that from, right? So then it gets into the introduction, basically how it works. Um, then it gets into the actual fighting of it, you know, sizes of games, how long it would take, you know, players and stuff. The, the White Dwarf battle report in here, or maybe it was the Reloaded book, they actually had like a game master, like kind of trying to keep the peace, so to speak, and stuff like that. So um, here is basically how to do it. I, and they suggested setting a timeline. And I've seen from personal experience, a lot of Apocalypse games kind of devolve into a, um, uh, pretty much the way every game of Monopoly goes. You, you sit there for like six hours and you know somebody like steals all the $500 bills from the bank and then you guys are just like all super salty just waiting for one person to roll on the space with all the hotels and just get completely wiped out. So if you have a structure for your apocalypse games like half hour turns, it's actually, I found it's easy to move a lot of stuff and shoot in a half hour turn. Um, for a side because you have a lot of helpers you're like yo move that yo yo roll that yo you have a commander kind of giving out orders and it, it tends to it tends to work out pretty good that I've seen in, in the past that helps and then you do a lunch break like round three then you come back you finish up to like round five you know announce it ahead of time keep it structured and these things tend to go really well um, and then strategic assets give you a lot of bonuses now there's some broke ass ones in here like flank march lets you come in from the board edge against your opponents that was kind of whack um, you know and that could get that could get a little sloppy and little feel badsies but they took that out for the, the new edition of apocalypse that was the big one that was kind of kind of whack about about this here the place objectives fight the battle and then they give you all sorts of you know toy porn basically right here like ooh, look at all these models you can feel you can literally feel the whole collection <laughs> heck yes back then that was like amazing you're like wait what 
and then they you know just show on strategic reserves how to do everything here this battle right here you probably remember this ultramarine choo-choo engine we're going to call it the choo-choo um this thing is actually a lot of people don't realize how big i mean look that's a bane blade right that's the train like that thing was big and it was built from scratch you know you can search it on um spiky bits you know ultramarine train i'm sure it'll pop right up the trigon right here was actually a forge world trigon the trigon they ported it over to plastic, but this one is actually the Forge World Resin one, which a lot of people don't don't remember that that actually started out as a Forge World kit. And then more toy porn here, you know, the fold out, the whole battle for steel, you know, Code Steel Ridge. You know, you got Gene Steelers coming out of the pipes here. You got some ultra, uh, you know, scouts kind of flanking in from underground or something going at the line here. And then all sorts of different stuff. The guys kind of coming in and they're trying to like thwart on Marnius Calgar, trying to hold down the middle there and all of that. So it was a really cool battle. Just to, you could literally read this book for days. It was so immersive and, and um, really just full of so much detail and rich pictures and artwork and, and things. For its time in 2007, amazing. Just simply amazing. It was bananas. And then there's the uh, the big choo-choo train right there so you can kind of get a better idea how big it is. And then here's the plan in advance. A little bit, a little bit more about you know organizing your battles. And like I said, they had a game master guy. And it just gets into all sorts of amazing, rich pictures of big forces. And remember, this is the first time they started doing formations. A lot of them, you know, have been ported over to current 40K. Still a lot in Apocalypse book are Apocalypse only, which that's really the only difference between Apocalypse and normal 40K these days is that you can play Apocalypse formations and Apocalypse and 40K you cannot currently. So, or Unbound 40K rather. And then it just gets into all sorts of amazing stuff. Now, another cool thing was when you bought the upgrade kits um, or when you bought the bundle deals, you got these upgrade um, bits. They could go on each of your tanks to mark them out as command tanks, which are really neat. So you had this little um, Eldar, uh, Eldar bit right here, this command uh, Tau bit right here, this kind of defiler face thing right here. For guard, you had this eagle antenna, and for space marines, you had this big ass like aspect sensor thing, which was really dope. And then it gets into the Bane Blade, because remember this this was previously only available in resin from Forge World. So when they brought it in plastic, though not as detailed, but way cheaper and so awesome, so fresh. And then they came out with the Shadow Sword, and you know the rest is pretty much history from there. They didn't have it out at the time. Um, the Shadow Sword upgrade kit, I think that was reloaded. And then they had custom stuff, which they kind of got away from, like the Plague Reaper in here, which also has a um, data sheet, you know, Thunderhawk, all the all the normal stuff you're gonna get used to see. So then it's got just more more battlefield porn. I mean, just amazing looking stuff. It's you just literally can't stop but stare at these things. Floor battle, who hasn't done that, right? And I mean, it's just so much immersive stuff in here. Tau terrain, you know, just big the, the defense laser. We've seen that like a million times. Can factory, which is feature battle on the back. Breakthrough right there. Like, I mean, this stuff is just so amazing. It was so cool to be a part of the hobby back then, you know, when it all came out. And then here's a big, like holding the, the hive city kind of fortress thing from chaos kind of coming up across the battlefield. And then they're kind of holding the city right here. And Karn, Karn the betrayer kind of goes rampaging and never dies. And, Man, it's just amazing stuff. And now we see stuff like this just on display at Forge World, you know, just like, hey, no big deal. Come on over to come on over to Warhammer World and <laughs> we got amazing looking shit. Right. So I've never been there, but I definitely maybe I should do a Kickstarter. Robbie he goes to England. I don't know. <laughs> That'd be pretty neat to do. Um because that's expensive. <laughs> oh, anywho, so then it gets into additional rules, and then this is where the gargantuan creature stuff first appeared. Super heavy vehicles first appeared. You know, now it's part of 40k. So a lot of the precursors to the rules were in here. Structure points um, weren't a thing anymore, or it, it was basically like they equated it to every three hull points it was a structure point. So they kind of got away from the structure point kind of thing. But, you know, back then that's basically what it was. And then when they converted over to the new edition, they were like, oh, just divide everything by three. No big deal, right? Um, stuff still kind of worked the same. They weren't like the unstoppable behemoths. They, they quite are today. But you kind of get an idea. Flyers, like I said, they were their own animal. They behave completely different from what they do today. They would come in, they would make a run, and then it would kind of go off the board. But they could do it every kind of turn type deal. So it was, it was interesting to see we didn't really see a lot of play i personally i don't think i ever played with or against a flyer the whole time those rules were that way so i can't really comment much on that one it was just either too much work or out of my price point i guess at that point you know what i mean and then they basically explain about the templates right here so i mean 
just so much stuff. And then we haven't even got to the rules themselves, which don't really matter anymore, you know, because so much stuff has changed, but they just give you an idea of how much cool stuff was in here. Remember the Hydra was actually a forge roll kit back in the day, and now it's a uh, part of the Plastic Wyvern kit. Fortress of Arrogance, you know, just a uh, straight pimp walking across the, the table. Drive me closer, I wanna hit them with my craw. <laughs> the craw. <laughs> oh man, there's so much good stuff in here. The precursors to the formations. A lot of this stuff is gonna look familiar to what you see today. Armored Spearhead, just in normal 40K. Line Breaker Squadron, Suppression Forest. Like, this is where it all came from, folks. Like, it's just amazing stuff in here. Just simply amazing. If you don't have this book and you can find it, and they are discounted now, you can get them off eBay, you can get them off Amazon, I imagine. You can pro probably walk into a lot of game stores, they're still on the shelf for a discount. Warlord Battle Titan, people converted these. They never had, Games Workshop kind of got away from doing that, rules for models that they never had, but back then, this was still an allowable thing for them. Of course, now we have Warlord Battle Titan rules because it's a real thing, right? Oh, man, memories. Who knew where we'd be today? Shit, 10 years from now, we might be playing with, like, the holographic uh, 3D chessboard on the tabletop, right? And then just all sorts of orc stuff, the Eldar, you know, they mixed in super heavies with these formations just through and through. Tau got stuff. I don't even think, I'm not sure the Manta was even out at this point, to be quite honest. No, it doesn't look like it was. Or else I'm sure they would have had a data sheet in here. Necrons had some cool looking stuff. They had like the super monolith pylon. They didn't really have a lot of like stuff dedicated to it. There's that pylon. But in uh, Reloaded, they had a few more things in there. And then it gets into Dark Eldar. Chaos had the most coolest looking stuff. That's total English. But <laughs> um, a lot of it doesn't exist today because it was like custom. Uh, conversions and such like the plague towers of corn and the plague tower of nurgle actually none of that wasn't even in here that must have been in reloaded wow well we will just have to review the apocalypse reloaded book here in the near future of course because there's a lot more data sheets in that one and then here's the tank battle or the can factory battle where eldar basically goes across this like kind of um uh call it a lagoon we'll call it a lagoon and then goes after this uh, tank tank can factory and then this was like where you could teleport to but then there was a random thing about the, what the oh here it is the production line you know you could roll on this d6 chart and sometimes you just randomly get a stomp it just poops on the stomp -a. hey guys here i am i'm a stomp <laughs> all right so then it gets to the tactical assets which you kind of had to keep track of there was no uh cheaty cards or game aids as i like to call them but here they all are in here and then this cool little cartoon that you've probably seen a colored version of this online um, somebody took the time to color it all in, but it's really cool little Where's Waldo of the battlefield kind of thing. And then it gets into the appendices, which we really don't need to see because they don't really pertain to anything anymore. Except for the fact that I wanted to show you this Allies Matrix chart right here, which for its time, we know what this is, but in 2007, we really had no idea how much bigger this would be, uh, you know, several years just five years later for that matter but there it is so you never really know in these rule books what what will come back or we will see in the future as you know we're going through all of these new supplements stuff like death from the skies you know you just never know angels of death uh any of the wolf and the expansions you know the previous or stuff that's going to be coming out in the future heck we don't even know age of darkness might get crossed over you know the horse heresy rules because those are actually a different type of rule set like you can't have more than 25% Lord of Wars, for instance, still currently in the Age of Darkness 30k rule set. So there's a lot of stuff that you might see, but if you're cognizant of all the kind of rules, you know, the jack of all trades, you know, uh, <laughs> know, know it all about what, nothing, but know a little bit about a lot. That generally tends to help out these days in uh, 40k where it's pretty much become a college level class to keep track of everything. But these were simpler times back then. And this really uh, started the, uh, nuclear proliferation of, I guess, 40K and the tabletop back in 2007. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.